and you want to hit the titter with the boys on Saturday night and take the old lady to church service on Sunday morning, this is the bike. What's up guys, Maximaxrx here and today we are going to be reviewing this 2007 Harley Davidson Electra Glide Ultra Classic. It is a huge bike with a huge name. As we're riding around, I think the best place to start any review is with a basic rundown of the spec sheet. Uh, and so this bike weighs in, I think, almost at 800 pounds. So with me sitting on it and no luggage, no gear, no nothing else, we are sitting well over the thousand pound mark going down the road, which is pretty insane. Um, basically, this bike weighs double what my Speed Triple weighs. Um, just on its own. Uh, going down the sped sheet, the bike is very long. It is very wide. It takes up a ton of space in the garage. Um, definitely more than any other bike I've ever owned. Um, and as you can see, it's got the traditional uh, kind of Harley shake and rumble to it, which is what makes it so special. Um, what else? Spec wise, we have a full audio system, no Bluetooth unfortunately, but it's got um, all the communication array stuff. We have cruise control, um, which is a great feature. In terms of specs on the engine and transmission, uh, it is a uh, belt drive, obviously like most Harleys. It's got a 96 inch V-twin, which is 1600 cc's approximately for you continental types. And uh, it's got a six-speed transmission, um, which is very wide ratio, um, with six gear literally falling off a cliff. Uh, that's basically only good for like very, very, very highway cruising. But honestly, so now we've got all the all the specs out of the way. Let's go ahead and cut to the uh, to the beauty shop. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Now that you know what we're working with, um, this review is probably going to be a little different uh, than some of the others. Um, you know, I, I'm not a Harley hater, but they're definitely one of my less favorite brands. And I was intrigued when I had the opportunity to, uh, to own this bike because it, there's some deep childhood part of me that always wanted a big Harley bagger. I don't know if it's just watching Sons of Anarchy or, or, or what the deal is. But there was always some sort of mysticism about these bikes. And, uh, you know, here's my review. And I can tell you, this is not a bike that I will be keeping long term. But I digress. You know, I going through my lexicon of, of words, I thought, how is it best to describe this bike? And I think the best way to describe this bike is mastodonic. There's really no other word um, that I could figure out that sums up all of this bike's features so well. So mastodonic, right? Comes from mastodon, which is a dinosaur, a big giant dinosaur um, that is probably under the earth turned into oil, which is the reason this thing even exists and can run. So what is so mastodonic about this bike? Well, for one, it is humongous big, like humongous big. 
It is long, it is slow, it is heavy, um, it doesn't handle very well. But let me tell you, you don't want to get hit by it um, at, at any sort of speed. So that's kind of why to me it really encapsulates the word mastodonic. Because, you know, it's a slow moving herbivore, but you don't want it to step on you. And uh, that's kind of how this bike feels to me. You know, some of these things are uh, intrinsic Harley things, and some of these things are very specific to this bike. And in my opinion, the electric glide is perhaps one of the most, if not the most niche bike on the planet in production, I would say of all time. Um, because it really only does one very, very, very specific thing well, and it pretty much doesn't do anything else. So what, what does this bike do? This is a cruiser bike, right? It's a long haul, 30,000 miles a year, iron butt rally kind of bike. That, you know, this, this specific bike that we're sitting on, at least according to the paint job, has been to Sturgis three times. Now, granted, uh, it, it's always, as far as I can tell, it's always been registered in Texas. So somebody drove this from Texas to, was it North Dakota? South Dakota, South Dakota, I think. Um, three times, and I assume drove it back. Now, there are some people who trailer their shit up to, to Sturgis, um, but at 24,000 miles, it's very likely that this bike was, uh, was very much ridden from Texas all the way up to Sturgis three times. It's just that kind of bike. In 2007, there was only one bike in production, in my opinion, that really competed with this. And that was the, I think, fifth generation Honda Goldwing. Now, yes, Kawasaki made a Concourse 14, but uh, as big and touring as that bike is, it's not really an ultra tour. It's more of a around like metropolitan area tour. And when I say this is because I think that bike clocks in 200 pounds lighter than this one. Um, and it doesn't have quite as many luggage options and it isn't just a as big. Like it's a big bike, but it's not quite as big. So in my opinion, the only bike that competed with this in 2007 was the fifth generation Honda Goldwing. And if you didn't show somebody a picture of the bikes and you just called them bike A and bike B and you lay down a spec sheet, even without a price attached to it, there is nobody, no sane person that would choose this bike. It doesn't, the technology isn't as good. The drivetrain is significantly worse in my opinion. The uh, seat comfort, I would say is probably about the same, but I have to give the nod to the Goldwing and almost every measurable metric uh, characteristic. Which leads us to the niche part because there is a very unmeasurable metric characteristic that justifies this bike's existence. And that is Harley Davidson. Now, Harley's been around since the turn of the century. And in some ways, their bikes haven't really changed all that much since the turn of the century. Uh, but they have perfected the look and feel of American motorcycling. And that, and at the end of the day, the Honda Goldwing is a refrigerator on wheels. Um, it is better than this bike in every measurable performance category. And yet you will see, and this is anecdotal, I don't have actual numbers in front of me, but uh, you will see way more of these than you will of those simply for the fact that this is a Harley and it looks like a Harley. And let me tell you, if you're gonna do 100,000 miles a year, somebody was like, Max, you gotta ride coast to coast 30 times. Uh, I'm sorry, 15 times. Uh, I would choose the Goldwing 100% of the time. But if you're um, a man of a specific age category, and you want to hit the titter with the boys on Saturday night and take the old lady to church service on Sunday morning, this is the bike. Um, you want 37 million color combinations with chrome and black and God knows what else. Every little tiny detail from the bolts that hold 
uh, these controls on to this uh, different size fairings to these little leather pouches everything on a Harley Davidson is customizable and they're both through Harley and through a myriad of aftermarket manufacturers that specialize in one thing which is making these things as customizable as possible in order to generate as much revenue as possible and that is what makes this niche it is a big niche but it is a niche because nobody in their right mind would buy this bike compared to its competition and while Harley has moved to water cooling um, today in my opinion the Indian is a better bike the BMW K1600 GTL or whatever is a better bike the Honda Goldwing is still a better bike and yet so many people buy these things and love them because it is a lifestyle choice um, you know whatever that means and uh, uh, you know, from from uh, if we're gonna backtrack a little bit here out of this kind of uh, minefield of social dilemmas, this bike is very well built. I've uh, replaced the battery, replaced the rear wheel, uh, replaced the rear tire, excuse me. And despite this thing being huge and ungainly, it was actually very easy to pick up with the jack. It felt very stable. Um, the rear wheel, despite the bags and everything else, came off in, I don't know, five minutes. Um, because everything is very well engineered and well thought out. And, you know, like, for instance, in 2007, I believe this was the first year, this bike has a keyless uh, start, right? Like, the key is in my pocket. It's not in an ignition somewhere. And I have no idea, like, this is fantastic technology, right, that you find in almost every car sold today, uh, every uh, medium to high-end car sold today. But I would venture that there might be a few other bikes that have this technology now, but it's few and far between. Even though it's a genius idea, every single motorcycle should have keyless entry. I have, like, it boggles my mind that so few of them do. But all in all, I've put about 120 miles by the end of this ride today on this bike. Uh, over the last couple of days because I wanted to give you guys a good review because it's such a such a weird thing that I, I hadn't really experienced and was am doing my best to understand and communicate to you guys because the the truth is riding this thing around in the city to me it feels too big it's cumbersome it's heavy it's slow to turn uh, honestly like if I lined up stoplight to stoplight next to like a v6 Honda Accord or like Toyota Camry I'm, and gave this thing everything that it had, I am pretty sure I would get smoked. Harley doesn't even give you a horsepower number because they tell you it makes 100 pound-feet of torque at 3,500 RPM. And honestly, all you really have is 2,500 to 5K. This thing is basically like a diesel engine um, in its rev range and kind of performance characteristics. And the more you twist the throttle, honestly, the more noise it makes but it really doesn't seem to have that much more get up and go. And granted, it's, it's moving a heavy bike and a heavy guy, but like, it's, it's kinda, kinda pathetic. I will say this, uh, in addition to the keyless entry, which I think is literally amazing and should be on every bike, uh, this bike also has a very good cruise control system. Uh, I tried it out a little bit yesterday, we're gonna show you guys today. Um, it works really well. You know, uh, credit where credit is due. Like, as much as I don't like Harley and, and don't particularly care for the image association and think their motors are incredibly outdated, the cruise control works fantastically. And in terms of comfort, the bike is very comfortable. But in my opinion, uh, the suspension wallow is so bad that to me, it actually takes away some of the comfort because I don't feel as safe on this bike as I uh, feel on other bikes. Like see, you know, that's pretty much full throttle and we accelerated a little bit, but there was mostly just a lot of noise. And it's a good noise. I, I very much like the noise Harleys make. Um, this bike has a Reinhardt aftermarket exhaust on it. I don't know if it's just slip-ons or if the, the header pipes are different or not, but uh, you know, it, it sounds good. 
And, um, you know, the electric line itself is weird because I, I believe even in 2007, there were bigger, more potent Harley engines, but for whatever reason, they were not available on this cruiser model. I know this is the only engine that, that this bike came with. Um, there is, there were no other engine options uh, for this model. But, you know, the, the clutch is nice. The transmission is, uh, I wouldn't say crisp, but it, this bike, the motor mounts are designed so that when you're at idle at a stop, this thing shakes violently because that is the look and feel that Harley's uh, owners want. And as soon as you give it a touch of throttle, it evens out and is perfectly smooth. There is almost no vibration that comes through these handlebars. You can sit here for hours and hours and hours on end, which is, I think, the point. Um, and it's super duper comfortable. And unfortunately, one thing I really don't like is that the transmission is very wide ratio, which means that I find myself shifting more on this bike than I do on a lot of sports bikes, which, you know, are, are so close in ratio that, you know, there's enough power to get you, get you going. Um, this thing has a bunch of torque, but it doesn't always feel very accessible because you really need to be over 2,500 RPM. And, uh, you know, in kind of stop and go Austin traffic in that 30 to 45 mile range, mile per hour range, it's very easy to fall out of that. So I find myself in second gear a lot. Um, on what should be like an open third gear road. I mean, I'm probably in fifth gear on my speed triple coming through here at, at normal speeds. Um, we're, you know, stuck behind this van a little bit. Um, but the bike, it, it does feel stable. I am still a little skittish of going through turns with cruise control on, on the highway. We'll check that out here in a little bit once we get to the uh, to a, a larger highway road. But see, like, that's full throttle and we're, we're you know, trying, it's trying. It makes a lot of noise, right? And we're, you know, going 70 miles an hour here. We'll back off a little bit. Um, but it just, this bike could use another 50 horsepower uh, or more, honestly. Like this, you know, this thing is so heavy that this could have a 200 horsepower motor instead of like a 70 horsepower motor. And I think it would be very tractable. Um, to kind of give a counterpoint, I, I forgot the name of the model, but I rode a couple years back when Indian was first coming back into the market. I rode the Indian Chief or Chieftain or Scout or something um, that was kind of a big bagger bike like this, and it had the biggest, the, their new big engine in it. And I got it to do a bur like a like a sitter from a uh, from a stoplight almost on accident because the bike is so heavy and the front brakes were so good. But I was able to just kind of rev it up and dump the clutch and it just went and blitzed the rear tire. This thing won't blitz the rear tire. In fact, like, I could probably get it to do a burnout if I was, like, up against the wall or something. But I don't, uh, like, I think it would be extremely taxing on the drivetrain. Um, and it just, it just, to me, it, it definitely feels underpowered. Like, there's a number of times the last few days that I felt like, man, I wish I had a little bit more power. But, you know, there we're going through the turns at like 45 miles an hour and the bike leans pretty well and you, it definitely feels stable. And you can, you can hammer down through the turns and it feels pretty good. But you can see I'm having to stay up in, I don't know, second gear, third gear maybe, um, because otherwise I fall out of the rev range and then I don't have that uh, immediate twist of the wrist feel to it. But I, I really feel very like safe and calm right now um, on this road, right? Like even even at, a, a, at you know legal speed limits, this bike is very much a legal speed limit bike, um, which is which is why it was very interesting to me. Like having ridden this, and then you look at like Sons of Anarchy and stuff, and they're like running from people. Like I think this is the same platform that the uh, like sheriffs had that was called the uh, Harley Defender, I believe. That was like a cop bike. And maybe that one had more power and less weight. It probably did. But uh, honestly, like, you know, even, even a mild sports car, you're not catching. Like, and like, if I was the bad guy, right, and I'm running from the cops or somebody, like, unless I can squeeze through someplace, they can't.
this thing isn't out running anything. Uh, you know, not in a straight line, not anywhere. Um, the other thing is, I wore low top shoes yesterday. That was a mistake. This motor throws a lot of heat. So today we're riding in boots. The one thing that this bike really does have in spades is space. It is, you know, it's a Ford excursion of motorcycles. Uh, you can have a second person on the back of this bike and not feel them at all. You don't feel their weight. You don't feel their body. Like, they don't have to be touching you. Um, you know, it's got a built-in intercom system. Um, I don't have the hardware to plug into it, but it, uh, you know, it has that. It actually blocks, uh, even though it's kind of a low-cut shield, there's only, I'm six foot tall, there's almost no kind of head buffering, uh, which is impressive. I thought uh, it would be more. In fact, um, one thing I don't really like is these uh, leg air deflector things. It's the summer in Texas, it's way too hot for that shit. If this was my bike, I would take them off uh, to get a little bit more airflow around the engine and around my genitalia. Uh, because it is very warm. The seating position is very comfortable. My arms are relaxed. My hips are relaxed. You know, that is very well thought out. Um, all in all, it's just, it's, it's exactly what you think it is. And in every way, I thought this bike was going to be slow. It was going to be lazy. It is. It's very slow and very lazy, and having had a couple of days with it now, I know for sure I never need to own another one of these. But I can understand why people do. Um, the other day I was rolling around, like, you definitely get, um, you know, you know, people are, you know, you get you get waves and thumbs up. You know, I, I pulled this into a gas station the other day to fill it up, and uh, you know, somebody came up and were like, "Oh man, nice Harley." Nobody ever says, "Hey man, nice Goldwing." They don't even know what it is. They're like, "Oh, that's cool. You got a refrigerator with some wheels on it." You know, tell me about your warranty. Like, nobody nobody cares. Um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't mind throwing a leg over another new Indian. I feel like they have a good mix because they're not chained down to this old Harley V-Twin technology. They can kind of think outside the box because their, um, you know, their clientele allows them to do that, right? Harley's kind of locked in this weird battle where they're like, we would like to give you more power and optimize things, but we've kind of reached the limit of what V-twin architecture is, which is why the Rushmore engines have uh, water cooling, because it, it just, it wasn't practical. Uh, in my opinion, this bike keeps up with traffic, modern traffic. Um, but, you know, if you're in top gear, like you're, uh, you know, you got to downshift to pass people on the highway. Um, I can't remember the last time I was on a bike that I had to downshift to pass people on the highway. Like, you're a motorcycle, your power to weight ratio should be exceptional. Like, we're coming up on a big hill, and I'm just under 3,000 RPMs, and I can't upshift, right? I'm at 60 miles an hour, uh, and we're going to basically just stay in it uh, in order to make this climb. And granted, this hill, it probably doesn't look like it on camera, but this this is a, a, a very steep grade. Um, you know, I pull a boat up and down this, uh, you know, almost every week. I'll actually be going down this road tomorrow with the truck and trailer. Um, but you can see the bike's under load. I got probably half, you know, half throttle in this thing to make it up this grade. And, you know, it, it just is what it is. Like, I don't really know too much about Harley performance modifications. I believe that you can bolt on jugs and heads um, to bump this up to like 18 or 1900 cc's uh, to have a little bit more get up and go. But I don't know if it's really enough. Like I said, I, I would want a very different engine architecture. But I will say this, in a very Norman Rockwell, Americana sort of way, this bike is beautiful. I definitely catch other people looking at me. I look at these bikes when I see them going down the road. And, you know, just sitting in my garage, taking up an enormous amount of space, I look at this thing and go, this is a nice looking bike. 
There's just, uh, there, there's no way around that one. There is something raw and elemental about it, and I, I do love that aspect of this bike. It is beautiful, I think. It sounds very good. Um, and even if I am spending three bucks a gallon to turn gasoline into noise, in some ways it's absolutely worth it. So, let's say open this thing up a little bit. I mean, look at that. We're just rushing to a red light, but not very quickly. And that was it. That was full throttle, the beans, everything she got. Didn't even chirp the rear wheel in a corner on asphalt. I'm about to jump on the highway. I'm about to head home. Camera's about to die, so I'll make this real quick. Uh, I don't hate this bike, but this bike is about as close to hate as I can get. It is overpriced. It is slow. It is heavy. It is huge. And the really the only reason to buy it is because you like the image. And honestly, if you like the image and this is the bike you want to buy, I understand and can respect it. But I'm going to sell this thing as quickly as I can now that this review is filmed. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching. My name is Max. This is Max Works. This has been a review of the 2007 Electric Light Harley Davidson Ultra Classic or whatever. And uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Love you guys. Peace.